Welcome to Hopkinton Coffee Break, your home for current community talk, with Patricia Duart, Darlene Hayes, and Connie Wright. Hello, and welcome to Hopkinton Coffee Break. We're here today with Deb Thomas, our guest, and sadly, Connie's got the bad flu bug that's going around. It's, it's nasty. Yeah. Deb said she had oh, it. Oh, I had it. I'm still getting over it, but I'm fine. Oh, so, yeah. So Not take contagious. care, Connie, if you <laughs> see this. <laughs> yes, Connie, take care. Well, thanks for being here. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, it's my pleasure. Absolutely. Well, Girls on the Run is the, uh, is the topic today. So tell us, um, what is it, first of all? So it is a not-for-profit mm -hmm. that actually is internationally based, and the international component is Canada. It's primarily okay. in the U.S. It was started back in, um, gosh, it was almost 14 years ago now, I think, by a woman named Molly Barker down in North Carolina. She started with a very small group of girls, and basically it is an, um, an after-school program, primarily, that runs for 10 to 12 weeks, mm -hmm. that its primary goal and vision is to inspire young girls to be all that they can be. Okay. It builds self-confidence, higher self-esteem, higher body image, like a healthy body image. Mm -hmm. And it's all through, um, there's this very tested and proven curriculum that's been studied, written up in Runner's World and some other um, magazines. And they've been featured on, um, I even think the Today Show and other programs where it um, basically the curriculum is teaching them these skills, like mm -hmm. life skills, like mm -hmm. self-talk and sure. there's this a lot of visualization, like a, a chord. Imagine taking out this negative chord and throwing in positive thoughts and being all sparkly. And they... So it's not about running. Well, so what it is is they teach the curriculum with running games and incorporate running into the program. Mm -hmm. So the program culminates with the girls running or walking a 5K. Oh, nice. And so we hear it's the Timlin? Well, you know, we did do the Timlin the first year, but Girls on the Run in um, Massachusetts has grown enough now that they do their own 5K. And so for the spring program, we're running the 5K over at BC at oh. Boston College. Oh, oh that's very oh, cool. Oh, really very fun. cool. Yeah, coming down calm at Exactly. <laughs> oh, yeah, you'll feel like a real thing. And what we, one of the big things that we promote with the girls during the program is we don't, you don't have to run. You mm -hmm. can just continue to move forward. You can skip, you can hop, you can jump just move forward because mm -hmm. it's not it really isn't a running program per right. se okay um but we have yet to have somebody not finish the 5k mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. they do they they are empowered by the end so you said it's, it's international yes. or, and um so is this the massachusetts branch or is it did you start this in hopkinton specifically or? so we are part of hopkinton is part of the greater the girls on the run greater boston okay and what had happened there's dozens of schools in oh that. there's lots of mm. them now we, what had happened was about um, five or six years ago, I had read about the program in Runner's World, and it really spoke to me. But at the time, I was still working in Boston, mm -hmm. and I was on the planning board. I, I'm an avid runner, and so I was running a marathon or two a year. And my husband said, really? In your spare time, you're going to create a not-for-profit. Yeah. Because essentially, back then, we couldn't go under the Girls on the Run Greater Boston chapter. So I looked into creating my own chapter here okay. in Hopkinton. Excellent. And... Um, for various reasons, it it became apparent that that would be, you know, you have to create a board, you have to do all mm -hmm. these things. And the timing happened to work out that the Boston chapter was trying to break away from their parent, mm -hmm. which was preventing them from adding us. Okay. So now we're, a, we're part of Greater Boston chapter. Uh -huh. okay. I actually recently joined the board, mm -hmm. and um, and we're looking to expand it to other communities. There's also oh, a Greater wow. Worcester chapter. There it? is. There's yeah. a Greater Worcester chapter, which I've met the folks from Worcester, so it's, it's great. It really is spreading within Massachusetts. So how many girls are involved now, roughly? Oh, gosh. Well, well, yeah, well, school already sold out this yeah, year. Yeah, so we sold out at Hopkins, which we traditionally do. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, we hate to turn girls yeah. away, but really it's just difficult to get the space and to accommodate. So um, the maximum girls that we can have are 40, 55 girls because wow. you can have 20 at mm -hmm. the Elmwood and Hopkins, but mm -hmm. the middle school program only allows 15 girls because okay. that's okay. a different curriculum. Mm -hmm. It's geared to the more mature audience, mm -hmm. basically. Mm -hmm. Wow. So Good. are there volunteers in the community working with you? Absolutely. Or, or, and then do you have people on the, like, the school staff that also help out? 
So um, I have a great group of moms who have been, and actually some of them aren't even moms, I should say. I have a friend, I think, who's on your team, mm -hmm. Barbara Smith-Blackwell. Yes. Yes. Yes, yes, she's loving so it. So it's great. What has happened is I now have a lot of women who continue to coach every season, whether or not they have children even in the school system mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or participating in the program. And we even have a coach from Franklin mm -hmm. who comes to Hopkinton and coaches. So over you, over the last five seasons, because we're in our fifth season, I've probably had 40 different people coach the program, and they've all been fabulous. Wow. And, um, and right now I have eight of my 12 coaches are repeat coaches mm -hmm. who just keep keep coming back because I'm sure you they love, love the program. It. Yeah. It's great. Oh, it's great. gosh. And what a schools, wonderful thing. So the school, you know, the school administration, they help facilitate with the space. space and, and, mm -hmm. and actually, I, I stand corrected. I had two um, teachers coach at mm -hmm. Elmwood. They were That's fabulous. Great. Oh, great. Absolutely fabulous. Oh, wow. So, so the, now have your kids, are you, I know you have girls. Have they done it? They have. <laughs> they have both. This is the first season that I will not have one of my children doing it. Oh. Because they are now eighth and sixth grade, and they both started when they were in, well, my younger one was at Hopkins. Mm -hmm. So she now has done the Girls on the Run program itself and Heart and Soul, which is the middle school program. Mm -hmm. And she's kind of maxed out. Mm -hmm. you know, she's doing mm -hmm. drama this season yeah. anyway. Mm -hmm. And my older daughter, similarly. You know, once, once you get to eighth grade, we do have eighth graders. But um, that, that's when it starts to dwindle because also right. in the middle school, there's so much for so kids yeah. to do. But that's such a great age that you it, capture it and uh, but get also, them involved. And, you know, at Elmwood and Hopkins, there isn't as much after school spring activities, mm, things like exactly. that. You know, the soccer and the sports are all on the weekends mm -hmm. still at that age. So something like this where it's healthy, it's after school. Um, is great. Absolutely. Um, and we run really. it immediately after school. We find that that is conducive to helping the parents. Yes. So, you know, you, you just come and pick your child up an hour right. or so after school, and it's right there on the school grounds, exactly. which everybody is comfortable with the safety aspects. Right, and right. So you're doing it at each school grounds then, so it's right. separately. So it's not like you're pulling, Do all, any, at any time, are all three schools together, or is it just on the day of the 5K? The day of the 5K. We did, there was one season where um, we had the Elmwood children come <coughs> to Hopkins, mm. and we, we merged the two, but now they're all different times. So right. we can't, we can't pull that perfect off. perfect in yeah. terms of, you know, logistically and yeah. so forth. Yeah. So how long have you lived in Hopkinton? I have lived in Hopkinton for 16 years. Okay. It's a lot yeah. Same as you, isn't it? Um, well, 18, 19 yeah. for us now. 80, 97 if I did my math right, yeah. That's when we came in. So what brought you here? Where did you move from? So uh, we moved here from Arizona, interestingly oh, okay. enough, but we're not from Arizona. Yeah. Um, I'm from New Hampshire. My okay. husband is from New York. Mm. And uh, Red Sox Yankees. Ah, lovely. <laughs> and uh, so when we were moving back, we wanted to be close to Boston because my husband and well, I, we both worked in Boston at the time. And frankly, that's very typical, the schools. Of course. You know, and the yeah. community. And yeah. Exactly, and that's what brought us here too. Not knowing, we moved from Minneapolis, yeah. so we, you know, just on the internet, and the schools were exactly. percolating and all exactly. that good stuff. Oh, but just the luck of the draw, frankly, I always feel that way. Yeah, I mean, a lot of lovely towns, but just lovely people. Yeah, that's been the yes. real. No regrets yeah. there. No, yeah, no. absolutely, absolutely. I moved from real far away. I know, but you this is our born and raised uh, Ashland, but right really? on the Hopkinton line. Oh. Over, but my parents live on the other side of Hopkinton State Park. Okay, oh, that's and fabulous. they're still there. So yeah. It's uh, uh, you know, great. so I have friends that for 50 years that have been in Hopkinton and Ashland and stuff. The two towns have always been together on a lot and done things. And I've gotten to know so much more about the history and sort of culture of Hopkinton, Ashland, you know, at its roots and core, knowing you. Mm. Just, you know, you're, um, and I love that. Just, you know, it makes me feel more connected. That's great. And so this is actually launching off next Tuesday. Right. We kick off the spring season Tuesday and we run on Tuesdays and Thursdays mm -hmm. for 10 weeks. The only time we don't, uh, we go with the school calendar. Oh, wow. So we don't go April vacation week. And then the 5K is June 11th. So now do the girls all have t-shirts and things like they that? They do. They do. Um, they should all wear them to the marathon. Oh, that would oh be they should. Well, the other thing Get that, some pictures uh, of them that at they the, do. Get pictures of them at the starting line when they paint fun. it. That'd oh, be yeah. fun. Well, what we do too is that the... Um, at Elmwood and Hopkins, there's also a community service component to this curriculum. 
so the children themselves pick a community service project to do on the school grounds mm -hmm. and they do that the second to last session of the season mm -hmm. and so that has been really fun like they have picked up trash they've made signs through the middle school girls one year they they put this was actually really cute they took post-its mm -hmm. and they posted them all around the school I remember uplifting that messages. uplifting messages like oh, you are beautiful oh, you are strong was that last year the year that. before that was the year before last, yeah because I, I actually took that picture and i had it up on my wall at one point it was really, really good stuff i'd gone in i had gone into elmwood and seen it and i was like whoa was all, all a zillion post-its everywhere one place, or everywhere, just everywhere you walk and it they wow. did like poster boards with them and they you know they had to go to the office and get approval yep, to yep. do it mm -hmm. that's what that's part of the program is you you yourselves have to go and speak plan. to the principal or whomever yeah. and, and get the support for mm -hmm. it so it's that's so empowering. I thought they'll remember that forever. Exactly. Good for you. So for do you know what they're doing that. this year? No, because you never know what they'll come up with with these kids. <laughs> <you can> imagine. <laughs> That's great. And you have a day job, don't you? I do. I do. I, <laughs> I work do? at uh, Remax. Okay. I'm a realtor with Remax, mm -hmm. so that's been very, very fun. Wow. Very fun. And is your territory Hopkinton only or beyond? Or no, what do you, do? you know, actually, since I worked in Boston for a while, initially when I first started out, I was doing a, a fair amount of work in Boston, mm -hmm. but it is nicer to be closer to home now. And yeah. so the market right now is very active. So mm. I'm finding Hopkinton and, you know, Holliston actually are the two towns right now that I'm focusing on primarily. Wow. And, you're quite busy, so it's great. That is great. I mean, I, I've noticed in the past two weeks, just driving around, you just see more and more oh. for sale signs. It must be like the spring season. is popping. Well, we really, because we, of the lack of winter, mm -hmm. they're saying that the February and March this year were, you know, historically, they're usually very quiet, mm -hmm. and they were not. Oh, okay. So, it, uh, interestingly, there's not much inventory. So, it, right now, it's a seller's yeah. market. Oh. But, you know, you're hoping that things come on for the buyers. Because right. things are going quickly right now. It's yeah. crazy. Yeah, the um, it, you know it's it's it, it, it's you know sweet when you like to know that the, it's a good market, but it's also hard to watch when you see. You know, I saw two in my neighborhood, mm -hmm. and I was like, oh gosh, we were all in play group together. But right. you know, <laughs> they're, they're young. One, or the, but the, these two families, both their youngest, are graduating from right. high school, and they're like, you know, we want to move to New Hampshire. We want to move. And, one of them wants to start a Christmas tree farm in Western Mass. Mm. But, you know, it's like, you know, a whole different stage of these people you've been around with for, like, 20 years. Exactly. It's sad when that happens. Our neighborhood yeah. turned. And, uh, you know, several good friends that we were in playgroup together and so forth, you know, moved away. And, you know, we stay in touch, but it's just different. Right, it's and, not the uh, same. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, so, and uh, again, that's why the Facebook page started, because as people bring started leaving. Bring people in. Yeah, so bring people in. So, yeah, I mean, it, it, it's your responsibility <laughs> to find us good neighbors. I take that. <laughs> right, I take that right. responsibility. I yes. bet you do. Absolutely. That's what, in fact, when we moved here, that's why we feel so lucky to have just landed here. We should have been using a realtor from the town you want to move into. Yeah. You know, it was right. a good idea. And we right. didn't know anybody. So right. our Relo corporate guy from Boston, <laughs> you know, pointed out Hopkinton. So, yeah. And I think actually your office in particular, you're with Remax, right um, over by Quattro and, yes, and stuff like exactly. that. Is that um, you actually do have people in that office that have a lot of core in this community? Yeah, we do. Yeah. Um, we Chuck do. has been around for years. Billy's been, oh my, you know, fourth generation here. Yeah. John, Johnny's grown. John's from Ashland and, and stuff Sandy's like that. Sandy's there. And, right. and yeah. stuff. It's, mm -hmm. You know, so it's a, a lot of good networking and people who may not have necessarily been there, but like New Hampshire, Boston, really know this greater community Absolutely. in that office, which is yeah. kind of nice to see. Absolutely. 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 Yeah. Well, Hopkins is just popping. My kids are visiting. I'm just because so it's excited. Good Friday. But yeah, well, today's, because it today's is good, good Friday. It's good Friday. It's a very good Friday. It's a good Friday. We're here, we're here with Deb. It's a good Friday. <laughs> I know. It's not that good so for my coffee adult children, she's laying in bed coughing. Yeah, exactly. My adult kids are visiting, and they're bringing, well, they both have friends, significant others, that are from New York and Texas, mm -hmm. respectively. So it's always fun for them to bring people home, and, yeah. you know, they walk around in amazement just seeing the things that are popping up. Oh, yeah, know, the a lot going building on. And, you know, by we laughingly call the Unibank kind of our little Vegas. You know, mm. I don't know if it's still doing that, and I actually liked it. Um, they the, the colored the lights. Colored, yeah. They did that for the holidays. Was I mean, I actually holidays? have an account at Unibank, and I, when the chatter was on our page, yeah, I, the. Um, the manager of Unibank Doors. I like her a lot. She's awesome. She is awesome. And That's she great. actually grew up on Lake Maspinot. She did. Okay. She's and a local girl. She's a local girl. Mm -hmm. And I said, oh, 
there's chatter about the lights. She goes, we only did it for the holidays. I'm she sorry, they're not still it. doing it. I thought it was a nice, it was our own they little keep it, they, keep, sign. they keep it white all the time. I, I, <laughs> I, you know, and I had no issue. I thought it was not. Right. She goes, I said, I didn't understand. She goes, I don't know. She goes, right. people were coming in here that were getting coffee and just yelling like, why do you oh, it was at night. And I'm like, but I said, be kidding, but it's nice. Hopkinson's own Sitco sign. Like, it, you know, that you know, could be a real beacon. I mean, I, I mean, honestly, who could it be disturbing? If you, you really can barely look out to a house around there. <laughs> right, barely. You know, you'll see it when you get off 405, that's all. Right. Mm -hmm. But I hear there's some uh, movement about that they're going to beautify the entrance they to Hopkinton. They are. We have a Greenway project going yes. on. And actually, that's uh, Unibank was a very large, was a large sponsor, sponsor of it. Oh, Both I, yeah. Unibank and uh, Paul Mastriani were, okay. were big um, lead sponsors in and Western nurseries. Western nurseries and some right. of that contributing right. okay. quite a bit. Because I'm, mm -hmm. I'm actually on the Chamber of Commerce board also. Mm -hmm. And um, well, man, I'm, the mover and I'm, on, the, I'm on, on the events committee. Yeah, so <laughs> that, that's actually been... Um, been really exciting and they're making a lot of progress on mm -hmm. that so that's great, mm. that's great. i mean actually I, th I think they plan to have some plantings in for the marathon they do. They and do. things like that so it actually so it's when you get off 45 heading into town right. that, yes. that that medium strip will yeah, all be exactly. planted okay it'll be gorgeous yeah. and there's yeah. signage some beautiful sign exactly. about welcome to um, hopkinton or something and awesome. really at no cost of the taxpayer right. mm -hmm. all private, all private funding, funding and on and the maintenance for it annually is mm -hmm. under five thousand right. dollars a year. Oh, awesome. that's fabulous! Yeah. I mean, and even if that was a taxpayer cost, I was like, oh my gosh, well, that's just an enhancement. I mean, it's exactly. going to be gorgeous. Exactly. Absolutely. Yeah. So, what else is going on in town? Tomorrow's an Easter egg hunt down on the common for real little kids. Oh yeah. I only did that like once with right. Winnie Andrew. It, it got chaotic. And no cheaters. Yeah. I've been reading some stuff about um, adults bringing kids early and oh, getting God. eggs in advance. I don't oh. know if that's true, I'm, but uh, that's, if that's happening, shame. <laughs> you don't exactly. know. We did it when Andrew was little, and it was kind of overwhelming. And this, this is he's 19 now, so this is he was like four years old. Um, and it was just a rush of kids and parents and parents. Got, then, yeah. and we started going to the one, I don't even know if they still do it, but um, at Fatima Shrine. Okay. Oh, nice. And so yeah. along the whole walkway, they had it. Right. And, oh, um, that and it was lovely. And it was nice. Um, and that's the only one we, other one we ever did outside of like in our own yard. I to have managed the one we have. You said it's a, it's a rush. I hope they, you know, let the little kids go first. I mean, right. it's just for, Exactly. Yeah. No, I don't like that. <laughs> About, and, and, and my kid, you know, he was like, I have like this picture of him hoping like holding like one like lavender egg and just and he right. was just content with his one egg and I'm watching like Skylar who lived next door who was like three four years older than him right, right you know out. elbows high <laughs> and stuff like that I was like all right I'm like well do you want anything else I've got an egg I'm like all right okay, you got an egg you're fun. done <laughs> he's done absolutely so okay. yeah oh, we're we're pushing it all up a day because my husband is going to Cuba on. Sunday That's on morning. our bucket list someday. Wow. A bucket list trip, Good and for able him. to go with um, a cousin, and you know, another, you know, some of his cousins his age, and a couple of a friend. Some of guys are going. Oh, that's fabulous. For a week, so wow, you know, he's all you know, Brad's meticulous about everything. Obama. I know. In fact, he was like watching us steadily, going, you know, what's this like? So um, I hope we. Ha there's no internet there. Although he says there's supposed to be some cafes that you are able to go you to. You wait maybe. hours to get into these cafes yeah. to get like, you know, and I think they limited you to 10 minutes at a time and you pay to get in to use them. Yeah. So, oh I but I think all that's going to change too over the oh, next year. Change. So he wanted to see it before in its purity yes. and see and these 50s cars and, you know. That's what we want. Yeah, and exactly. Stuff. We can't afford it, but that's really well, what we want. I know. So hopefully he's going to have to take a zillion pictures. So It'll look like we'll I won't hear a word from him for the week, but right. I can't wait till he gets back. Oh, absolutely. And, yeah. Hear all about that. Oh, he better take a lot of pictures. He better, I know. And you didn't want to go on this one? Well, I, you know, yes. I mean, I want to go, but I don't want to. You know, it's a guy trip, so yeah. they're going. And um, I was, I wasn't stay. invited actually. They just planned, you know. So that's fine. You know, exactly. go check it out. Exactly. Absolutely. So what are you doing on Easter Sunday then? Well, you know what? I'm going to be home alone by the, by noon on Easter Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> Come on over to our house. Well, maybe I will. You know, because I, yeah, the kids will be heading back. I, and and um, come see chaos in action. No, oh, good chaos. What, what do you do with, at your house? So I'm going to my sister's. My mm -hmm. sister actually lives um, just a couple towns over, and she has a farm, like a vegetable farm house. And so she has us over every year for Easter. That's so, fun. That's awesome. So what's on the menu? I'm still brunch. Out. We do oh, brunch. very good. So I'm okay. bringing, I make this... Um, 
upside down French toast, sticky bun, French oh. toast with pecans oh. and brown sugar. Mm. And I just sit overnight. Which, yeah. Yeah, my it husband makes one so sits overnight. Oh. French that bread okay. and oh, it's delicious. So I was like a custard. Yeah. It it's yummy. So we're doing that. <laughs> my kids still decorate eggs. Oh, what yeah, we're I still decorate eggs. Oh, we are in the too. morning. Tomorrow and, yeah. we're doing it. Yeah, that's what they just asked to do it tomorrow and. Well, no, we didn't go buy the eggs yet. No, I've got the eggs, and we just do the, the basic pass dye. But yeah, you know, you've been trying the more adventurous, old school egg dye. Yeah, I do it with some um, onion wrappers and, and beets. Beets. Oh no, no, beets. yeah, no. Beets. no, that's not my <laughs> mo. No, right, right. <laughs> and this year, I'm going to do one that Binky shared with me. Was um, you take um, nylons? Yes. And you put like a flower on the egg, and then you wrap I it around a nylon. I saw that in a YouTube and video. Then it's, and then it's the same thing I do with either the beets, the red cabbage, or the onion wrappers. Right. So you, you have a pot boiling with onion wrappers. You have one boiling with red cabbage, one with beets, and then you the so. Um, but if you take the flower and you press it against the egg, and wrap it in the nylon, yeah. and then drop it in drop there. The whole thing in the vegetable. When you take off the nylon, the um, flower impressions on the egg. So like when it's in the beet juice, it comes up like a reddish yeah. pink, mm -hmm. and um. When you pull it off, it'd be like a cream color wow. flower underneath. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. beautiful. So we're actually going to do that yeah. tomorrow. But, <laughs> but One of these been, days, we, I might try that. We've, but we've not been today. doing the, the natural stuff a bit because I'm cutting up a lot of these things anyhow. I'm using a, so I mean, we're using, I'm using root vegetables, roasting them on, um, getting them ready on Saturday. Maybe I can try carrots. Uh, I, mean, I don't think carrots will work. I but, know. but I'm gonna because I do purple cabbage and we're doing you know a ton of ton of onions. So I have all the wrappers. So I yeah. just throw them in the. I just throw the wrappers in the pan as I'm peeling and chopping. Right. That's great. And that is. A, it is actually. So I, I, I just and then I just started boiling them. Exactly. Exactly. I mean, they're not pretty designs, and they don't have any stickers on them and tattoos, oh, I don't which like we stickers. had when we were kids. Yes. No, we, were, we were old school. We were crayons yeah. and paths exactly. and the different colors and sit around the That's table. It. Smell the vinegar. Smell the vinegar. Get us up. And then you're trying to figure out, wait a second, am I going to use, do I want this cup again? <laughs> right. No, I throw them out. I get these little plastic yeah. cups just for that. Oh, it's so fun. I like tradition. Yeah, Everybody, fun. anybody's traditions. You know, exactly. if I know about them, and if they've got good food involved, I'm into it. Uh, now, are your girls in Girl Scouts? They were. They were both in Girl Scouts. Um, I was a troop leader for my younger daughter for a couple years, and they stopped maybe about two years ago. Mm. So my daughter's a sophomore, but and still in it. But um, next week is the um, this edible cake thing is um, that it's a junior troop doing it. I think they might be bridging from junior to cadets. They're doing it for their bronze award, and it's you bake a cake or something that. And I, I, when I Googled it, it's like a national mm -hmm. thing that these, these edible contests where, you know, I think I posted a picture in our newsletter where it was the caterpillar book from the uh, toddler caterpillar book, and then mm -hmm. someone made the cake to look like it. Oh, and, yeah. And, you caterpillar know, caterpillar, that one? Yeah, oh, I, I did oh, that that's one. a great book. But they make, um, <clears throat> so that's next Friday night, April Fool's Day at uh, St. John's Church. And it's a, supposedly a national April Fool's thing that I mean, Amy, Amy Rittenbush had posted up that it was something that goes around all over the place, and this is the first time in Hopkinton, and this girls' troop is doing it, and Good it's. Uh, I, I actually want to go check it out. I actually get real excited for April Fool's Day. We're you taping really? here next week. I don't know what the heck could happen. Oh, I didn't. Fool's that's right. right. But that's a Friday. Oh it's my Friday. God. Yeah, well, oh, I'm fun. scared. Yeah, yeah, no. yeah, you should be scared. <laughs> exactly. I'm afraid. I may even go to Deb's house and put like you know saran wrap on her toilet seat. <laughs> <laughs> oh goodness um, gracious! I'm trying to think what else is going on next week. I mean. Marathon's coming up. Oh, Marathon yeah. is coming up. You know. When is that date? I just so, just so to lock I think in my it's brain. The 18th. Uh, is it the 18th or 19th? Yeah, I think it's the yeah. Okay. Marathon yeah. We've officially broken ground on the library. We went to the groundbreaking. Oh, I'm not Actually, the week, <clears throat> when we, um, when we uh, taped with Tim two weeks ago, we went straight from there over to the groundbreaking, the three of us together and stuff, yeah. and we're there for it. Oh, that's cool. um, Say goodbye to the li retiring library yes. director, yes. Uh, Rona, um, going to be with her grandchild, first grandchild born, the whole family, she so has been nice. moving so to North I, Carolina. I um, <coughs> also want to talk about the event you're going to be doing for Bobby, Bobby Gibb, Gibb. Yeah. Oh, yeah. and stuff. 
Um, <coughs> what is Excuse the me. date of that? So Wednesday, April 13th, and there's going to be two components to the event. We're, we're really excited about this. So I'm an avid runner, and so for me, I'm excited to, you know, to meet her, although I did actually meet her at the Ashland Half Marathon. Mm. But we have Bobby Gibb coming, we have Bill Rogers is committed to come to the event, and we have Ambie Burfoot, who is one of the writers for Runner's World. He is a very accomplished um, runner himself, who okay. actually just wrote a book about um, like inspirational women in running, pioneer mm -hmm. pioneers in running for women. And so we're going to hold it at the Country Club and uh, we're doing a VIP reception from 5.30 to 7, which will be past um, cocktails and mm -hmm. some hors d'oeuvres. And then at 7.30 to 9, we are going to have a, a program, if you would, where um, we're going to be honoring Bobby. And so we'll have Amby and uh, Bill and some others speak. Mm -hmm. And um, Ambie's bringing his new book as well, oh, so we uh -huh. will have opportunities for people to sign his books, yeah. or him to sign the books, I'm sorry, and some autograph opportunities mm -hmm. for people. And um, how do they uh, find out, how much does it cost and how do people find out how to go? <laughs> Absolutely. So the, the VIP reception is going to be $100 um, a person, mm -hmm. and the um, more broader event is twenty dollars a person oh wow mm -hmm. and the the purpose of the event not is not only to honor bobby but she is an accomplished um sculptor right. and it is the 50th wow. anniversary of her running of her being the first woman running the boston marathon so mm -hmm. that there's been a lot of no, like noise yeah. about this um Amby just released an article she's being featured on espn so mm -hmm. we are honored to have mm -hmm. her come to hopkinton absolutely and we're trying to fundraise for her because she's been and, commissioned and to don't know is that she actually wasn't an official runner she jumped out of the basically out of the bushes to run yeah and <clears throat> she jumped out at the back and they didn't want her running didn't they pull her off or because no, no, she no, was no. a woman running no no she no. fit she ran the whole thing but i remember watching it outside the parking lot at saint cecilia's church and i might have been this is in the late 60s Mid and I remember my mother yelling, there's a girl, yeah. right, and right, stuff right. like that. But I think there was an iconic photo of her jumping out, yeah, and then some men having some problems, but she that did get it. to there run. Was was that? There's another woman. Oh, okay. Who That's a different person. Oh, sorry. But that there, was is actually, a, there is a fabulous picture of her, of Bobby, at the finish line that okay. actually a poster is being made that All will right. be available, oh, too. Oh, that's awesome. And it is a really cool picture. She's wearing her brother's shorts, mm -hmm. and they're like basketball shorts. <laughs> and there you see her, and it's clear that she's a female. And there are these men behind her. That's a great one. And so one. she's yeah. coming across the finish line, and there that's are these men in the background. One. So it's fabulous. So that's really exciting. So we're going to post up a couple websites. One is going to be the girls on the run, Boston org, mm -hmm. and that's from there. You just click on locations. You can register. Um, starts Tuesday, so you can get your kids in for Elmwood and um, Middle School still, and. Um, There'll be a link on the Girls on the Run page yes. for the, the event at the, uh, happening at the Country Club. Yes, and actually we are going to be publicizing that in the 26.2 Foundation's website as well. And there'll be a press release on that, and we're using Eventbrite to have people pre-register for that event. Great. Great. Well, we're just happy, so, happy to have you. It's been a so pleasure. Do some happy Easter. Things. Happy Thank spring. Right. Thanks for joining us, Thank everyone. You. See you next time.